and welcome to the Break the Game December 2v2 show match. I am Omo, and with me here, of course, we have Dominic as well as ZK. How are you guys doing today, Dominic? Doing all right, thanks. It's been an interesting week setting this all up, but now we are here. I don't have to do any work besides commentating, and I'm excited. <laughs> That's a lot of work, though. ZK, I'm loving your smile. How are you feeling about this? We excited? Oh, yeah, I'm excited. We have some gr a great show match today. We're going to have uh, some great players. So always excited to see more Immortal. And this week's going to be a treat. As per yeah, well, it's my first time actually watching it. Can you guys tell me a little bit of what I'm in for here? Well, you're going to be in for a lot because these are the best <laughs> players that are currently playing pretty much, like, certainly for regular tournament participants, that have teamed up with some of, like, Magical's teamed up with Flicky, who are both fairly strong players. Magical's definitely much stronger. Santa's teamed up with Sleepy Ghost, though, and Sleepy Ghost we haven't actually seen on stream before. We've seen Santa a ton. So that's going to be exciting as well. Okay, yeah, recall, fantastic. So you... Go ahead. Yeah, if I recall, Sleepy Ghost, though, has played a lot of other strategy games, so he has mm -hmm. experience in that, so a lot of that comes into Immortal as well. A lot of those things that you've learned from other games, they, they come through and you can be good from that. So I'm excited to see what Sleepy Ghost, though, comes up with as... Dom said we haven't seen him much before. Translatable skills. We love a bit of that. Well, I'm not sure the production want to show the brackets, but since we're mentioning the players, I feel like why not? Let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at the teams here a little bit if we can pull that one up. So you guys talk about the players specifically. Which teams are they belonging to? Can you like just sort it out for the viewers at home for myself? Well, Walter we Motives <laughs> is Santa and Sleepy Gusto, and Magic Flick mm -hmm. is unsurprisingly magical and flicky. Fantastic. I love that little graphic we have here. A face-off between the two best teams, the four best players that we're looking out for. Do you guys have favorites? Are you guys rooting for anyone in particular? Rooting? No bias. Though. Yeah, no, not... I mean, I'm always rooting for Santa just because we're close to Christmas, you know? You gotta root for Santa Claus. Oh, yeah. You can't go against him, and that's the main reason for it. Do I think he'll win? Doubtful? He, he, he can pull it off for sure, but... Nah, he, he can come up with crazy strats. Magical is generally the stronger player, so it's hard to say. But Santa's pulled it off before, and he can do it again, especially with Christmas behind him. Yeah, and I'm just gonna go with well, I'm gonna go with the statistics that Magical has the advantage. So mm -hmm. we can go to the game now. Yeah, fantastic. I'll see you boys. Have fun. Okay, so top left corner, we see in the blue Flicky playing as all his allies Magical, and of course we see Santa Claus pulling the Santa strategy of pulling the work first. <laughs> Christmas okay, well, well Omo, this is what you're in for. It's a really early cheese. Game one. Santa and Sleepy Ghost, though, they they like well Santa likes to do this sometimes. Throw all the workers in, set up well, just attack, not even set up turrets, not even go over cannon rush. This is literally just hit your opponent with workers until they die. And this is important to mention, there are towers to help defend, but not this early in the game. So the towers are just there, they won't be attacking for another minute or so. So those workers just need to fight other workers, and none of them are mining. Magical already has two production buildings coming out, so he's waiting for those who wants to lay. And the fight is happening, the workers are fighting the workers who can win this battle. Blue's getting surrounded, poor Flicky. Magical needs to come help his ally. Magical trying to find a way in, but Flicky has been splitting up. Flicky trying to get the flank, that's not going to help when you're dealing with basically melee combat. Magical, able to si isolate some of Sleepy Ghost's moats. When here come the fire stingers at the north, Santa, Santa's going for it. He's go doing the cannon rush, getting the getting all the fire stingers ready to shoot at the worker line. No units on the way. Well, Santa and Sleepy Ghost can keep their moats alive, and they've been doing a reasonably good job of that. Getting some caught out, but they've taken more and more of Flicky symbiotes. Magical, actually military units now. This is, oh, this is very tight timing. Whether or not Magical's gonna be able to pull this out, but one of the fire singers will go down before it deals much damage. That second fire singer getting a few shots off. Most of the symbiotes for Magical are out, but now with the mass hunters here, Santa still has his workers and still dishing some out some pain. And yeah, they're in control of the alloy line. Poor Flicky can't be mining for long right now, but these units are coming. They are coming, but what's gonna? What is it going to mean in the mid game? We've got got the military advantage here slightly for Team Ice for the for Magic Flick. Then once once we get past this bearing in mind Walter Motives, they're in their economy land has been rebuilding this entire time. So they're still going. Yeah, it's important to mention, in this game, we do have the Bastion, and Bastion gives one full alloy line worth of income. So even if you have no workers mining, you always have some income coming in. 
And because of that, Santa and Sleepy, even with all the workers built, they still had an economy running. They still get to build up, but they still feel quite a bit behind right now. This is Flicking Magical's chance. They are moving in now. They have very little resistance if they attack. And they are on the way. Sleepy Ghost is sending out a few Zentari. Magical and Fleeky don't see much on the map. They're heading their way. And not much, uh, not much standing their path. They're heading for the Pyro Camp. Need to get a bit of Pyro of their own. And that's really going to help the push come in using those immortal abilities. Magical's going to be throwing that down for extra, extra sustain. To get into the fight, expect to see Malagat summoned for the Red Harvest. That way, Magical, even as units die, they maintain their army power as Kittle will pop. Act as a bit of a front line. Yeah, they do have the, the towers to help defend the north, the top of their bases, and Ghosto retreat just in time, doesn't lose one of his Antari, and can head back to the tower to heal up. Magic Flick finding the other path up. Not a whole lot of resistance either. No towers this side of the map. They've formed up. Trying to find the hits, but not confident they can take this Antari with their range. And they are right. Flicking Magical... The more important thing here is they have their expansions coming up. This this attack can work just as well as a contain. Yeah, exactly. This contain is going to work wonders as Magical and Flicky have expanded. Also have their Efer up. At least Flicky has an Efer up and running. Santa and Sleepy do not, which means they're stuck on their tier one units. They can't take up for now. They'll need to head up there unless they're heading just for another big all in. That's a lot of units coming forward. That's going to break the contain. Gives Walteria Motors a way out of their base with a ton of Zentari to work with. Flecky and Magical, hopefully they haven't invested too much in expansion. They are going to need a bit of firepower here. Santa Sleepy, always be wary of going up a hill. If you're up a hill, that's when you get <laughs> killed, killed as you don't see what's shooting at you. Instead, Santa content on taking map control, going for those pyro camps and getting his power up and running and maybe he is getting closer and closer to that estimated pillar from the heavens and if he can get that in right position that can be a game changer as well it's gonna be a bit of work but that's been that tracks we haven't seen a lot of pillar rushes though like pillar rushes because of how expensive pillars have become have not been a thing in a long time and that's seems magical has caught on to this fact it's not going to help them that knowledge is only going to lead to dread San and Sleepy Ghosto simply aren't letting Magic Flick take any pyre. It's funny, it comes down to micro, but microing gets that many Zentari is not easy. Zol comes out to help defend, and with Zol coming out, they don't really need to stay there, but they take advantage of the hill again and go jumping down on them. Ooh, man, a few Zentari getting lost there. Those are expensive losses. Ooh, nice hit there. Dropping Red Harvest on top of that. Magic Flick going for it. Able to push back Walteria well, Motives. Pillar is available for Santa. The problem is the unit simply do not have the position they would need to make it work. Yeah, it's all about position. Once you put it down, it doesn't move. So that pillar needs to be in the perfect position to win the game from there. And while none of the red players, have, fire players have expanded, they have a lot of units and they need to make this work if they want to win this game. Throm's coming in from Flicky. Nothing that Walteria well, Motives can do about that. None of the units shoot up. Just more and more advantage to Magic Flick. Santa Sleepy Ghost does still have, the, do still have the pillar ace in the hole if they can push back on these thrums, but it's getting harder and harder for them to maintain that momentum. Yeah, the thrums and the Icors are out, both that are dishing extra damage to these Zentari. At least the thrums won't take any damage from it, but the Icors do dish out a lot of damage. Those are light units. Zakal is also coming out. Well, Tyrion Modus is going for it, though. Zakal might. They've got to be really working their job here if his magical does not have anything at home. That there it is! Walter Motus goes for it. They don't care. This is their one shot to make the pillar push work, and they're gonna make the most of it. Centauri will have range. That gives a massive advantage against Magic Flick's forces. And even goes on power broken on top of it to stop it from dying, getting Orzum on top <laughs> to help uh, defend this position. Oh, you know, jumping on top, is it enough units to take this out? There's a lot of Zentari, but Zentari can take it out slowly but surely. Reinforcements from Magical getting a false around, and Fire gets eliminated from those Zentari, and their position is dead. So, <laughs> need to figure out the next, next step in this plan, but it's looking pretty dire for them. They took a lot from Magic Flick. It's worth noting that while they lost 
significant chunk of their army. It didn't go. It went down swinging. They didn't go down swinging. They killed a lot of. They killed a lot of their opponents' units. Uh, but those Frums and Icros and Flicky can really dish out the pain against these Zentari. Base didn't even go down that. That could have been a good target. They were so close to getting it, but had to fight off the army afterwards. Those Frums just taking pleasure right now in the. Yeah. Just so. Uh, Not to mention this whole time, Flicky's been expanding. Like, oh, that's the, the, yeah, that is flicky, and it's it's paying off. As long as they can keep their economy stronger, then Magic Flick will have no problem maintaining their position in this game. And we still don't see Sleepy Ghost going for Ether. They're still stuck in Zentari. Yeah, it's, well, they're fine. Santa finally got some Ether, so he has the the energy to tech up all the Ether he needs. But he'll need a lot of things to deal with that many frums and. Santa trying to get out of the base again, try to break the contain, but this time it might not even be enough as every single unit is getting a surround on him, his four units. Sleepy Ghost coming from the back with his workers pulled once more to help dish, dish out the pain. Zoe comes out and those workers are not long for this war. No. It's a, it's, a, not, it's a sweet bookend for the game, but it's not going to help them out militarily. Those, those moats really more of an asset to Magical taking game one with Flicky. Whew. All right, so Omo, just to, just to, just to make it clear that is not normal, but that is Santa sometimes. Yeah, S Santa's the one that revolutionized the game by doing worker pulls, and he's done it quite a bit, and always tries to make it work every single time. There's something that changes the game. He's <laughs> gonna bring out the workers and try to make him work. I don't that think I've seen it work in a while. <laughs> it it hasn't. It's. I mean, and Magical knows how to deal with this. I think Magical has practiced a ton, so they know how to deal with all these cheeses. Yeah. Well, they've invented a yeah. lot of them too, so yeah. That's not what I think I should be expecting for the rest of the games, right? But that's no, game no, one no, probably that's not. No, Santa, Santa is also really good at the late game macro game. So it's it's just that go for the cheese just to try it because you're best of five. You got three game games that at least you got time. Yeah, I was promised late game, so that's kind of what I was hoping for here. But that oh, was no, still you'll get, you'll get late game. Don't worry, Santa should. Okay, do maybe worry. Santa probably will go for late game. Santa generally, man, Santa goes for late game after a while. It's going to be a yep. bit of a worry, as we saw last game, Flicky expanding like that, and Flicky's all about that late game exactly for that reason. He loves getting a lot of bases, a lot of economy, up and running, and because of that, well, it gives him a bit of a lead unless uh, he dies beforehand, which Santa might try to take advantage of. That's the right. plan, well, I think. We've got a little bit of time before the next game. Not too long, so I'm going to try to structure this question a little bit here. I think this game, to me, came down to two key moments, right? The worker rush and then the Zentari all-in on the base. Do you guys think there was anything else I missed there, or were these the two pivotal points? Those are the two pivotal points in the actual engagements. Mm -hmm. The contain coming in from Magical and Flicky, that was pivotal because it set up for them to win in the Zentari push. They had the units in the economy to be able to get... They, they had more assets once it came down to it. Magic Flick it just really had just more like... stuff. Cool. It just came down to a coin flip? Was that it? Or like... No, it, it, came down to, it came down to slowing Better down macro. that push. The fact that, the, fact that okay. the push got slowed down by the contain and then slowed down the pyre, the, 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 taking the pyre, and then kept yeah, pushing was... Walter, Mir Walter Mirmo's back. Just yeah. that bought tons of time for Magic Flick to build up their army big enough that even with the pillars, they could deal with it. Yeah, yeah, we could see that a lot in the center with the abilities coming out. Zol, Red Harvest, stopping the push from coming at the time they yes. wanted. And because of that, they were able to just keep going with it. And that push just, it got slowed down too much. It really had to hit the timing. And after when the Frums come out, the I-Cores, which kind of hard, hard counters Antari in a way just with their extra damage. There wasn't much that they could do at that time. Their push had ended. Their opponents had spent all their pyre, but it doesn't matter. They had the units at that point. Was was there a point that you guys think they could have pivoted to Eta, or was it just too late? They missed the timing. If when they had gone for the push, if they hadn't been, if they hadn't totally committed, they could have set up Ether and maybe an expansion, and then just not pushed as hard in, letting themselves get surrounded, but go for a contain themselves, double check outside bases and then pivot into tech units. That would have been tough, but it would have been... It would also have gone against what they were planning, because clearly they were going for that. They had missed the timing, but they 
It's like yeah, so after you don't want to go half measures, hard. right? You don't. You don't. Go half you really commit. don't. It would have been. They would have had to wait five ten minutes just to build up into the tech they needed to really push because that would have to get straight late game. Yeah, they couldn't have attacked like until it. they got to the uh, to the top level of tech. Yeah, and although Orzum is very good at defense, he's in a defensive immortal as we mm -hmm. generally tend to categorize him, and because of that, they're very good at just staying on two base and defending everything. But the strategy against that is just to expand like crazy, and Flicky was already doing that on his four or five bases, and Magic would imitate him. It would have been ten bases to two. There's not much they can do at that point. It, you better commit to the all-in of that, and that's what they, they decided to go for. Uh, their opponents knew how to react to it and did it well. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was very well played. Great points there. Uh, I have a really noob question I gotta ask you guys from my perspective. <laughs> that game was Kof against Aru, right? If you were to just Cross break it down there, yeah. fire for a viewer, which one scales better? Which one is a better early game? Are there general guidelines you should follow in that matchup? Not necessarily. There's a big yeah. thing with Croft when you go against Aru. Uh, you got to be careful of the Frums. The air units we saw, the Mosquitoes, yes. the giant Mosquitoes, really, <laughs> are really pesky going all over the place. And yeah. the way Croft begins, you don't have anti-air unless you tech the specific structures. So often, Croft is kind of in that line of you need to get that anti-air out as soon as possible or else you're going to get uh, Frumped. And you, no one wants to get Frumped. No one does. We yeah, the other, going... the other part of it specifically for Orzum is that it's a bit easier early on, especially like ZK said, defensively, specifically because Zentari have the range tech. All right, cool. We are going to try to replay have anything right at home. see if this one works. That, there is. Going we'll see if this goes for it. Well, this is the push we were talking about. As we see, Flicky and Magical are able to surround on San and Sleepy Ghosto, locking all the Zentari in, making it an all-in and as much as hard as they try, Walteria Motives can only take out one base, if that, before see, just getting fully surrounded. The big issue here is that the push happens at seven minutes. We needed this push to happen in about five to six minutes. And it made such a world of difference having the overwhelming numbers. But they were just slowed down so much. So they did their best. At that point, the army comes in from everywhere to surround the air units. Everything is there to stop this push from happening, no matter how powerful it is. Would it have made a difference if he killed the base here? It would have Not, helped a bit. It, it might have. If they, if they were able to expand behind it, it would have helped just to slow down Flicky's expansion pattern. It would have still been a risky move. Because they also had needed to rebuild no their army. <laughs> yeah, because you look at them as a mini-map right now. Flicky already has four bases. If he loses one, he still has three. So they're still on one. Yeah, the math doesn't add up. Even killing that base isn't quite <laughs> enough to catch up. Yeah, like even for me, I can it's do timing. That it's way. timing. All right, fantastic. Well, I do believe the game's going to be ready soon, so we should be throwing over to that in a second. Let's see if we're going to get any late game. If we're not throwing over just yet, what are you guys looking for in game two? Oh, I am honestly looking map. Yeah, so we're... True. Yes, that's, that is the one thing, is we do have... Fool's Bay. A... Fool's Bay, thank you. Yeah, Fool's Bay, which is a much more late game friendly map than Lost Province. Okay, well, we're, we are going so. to Fool's yeah. Bay right now, so guys, it's easier it to defend your main base. Yep. And yeah, Fool's Bay, Magico and Flicky in the Northeast playing Zol and Mala. Their opponents, Santa and Sleepy, both coin for Zol. So a full Aru matchup this time around. Magical is, well, being the one exception here, going for Mala. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, yeah, I'm now I want to keep an eye on what Santa and Sleepy are doing anyway because Santa, Santa has some cheesy builds from Zol too they're going for it as well double okay i'm sorry omo we're not gonna have a late game this game at least not intentionally because san is gonna try to go for 16 bone stalkers summon Zol, and get rid of their opponent's main bases as quickly as possible that is the game plan to be fair we've had a lot of these games even if it's a full-on rush like there's not a bigger rush than this for Zol. we've seen it happen in the past that it goes to late game after this you kill some stuff and then we just reset because there's enough defensive tools that you don't die outright to it. You just gain an advantage. Uh, that's, and Magical that's is reacting well to it, though. Magical is reacting... I mean, Magical knows what they're doing. Magical is going to be reacting well. They've seen it. They have their teapot. They're going, oh, well, yeah, Santa's doing the thing. And it's just a matter of get your own military, push them back. As long as you can avoid getting checkmated between Zol and the, and the Bone Stalkers... Like one of them attacking one year outpost, the other one attacking the other, then you're fine. Generally, you're really in trouble when you try to expand for behind when you try to expand after seeing it. As Flicky's doing so, Flicky might just lose his base out of that. 
But if Magical, if Santa and Sleepy go for the base instead of the go for the expansion instead of uh, the main attack path, that's when you can get slowed down too much and let let enough time for your opponents to get their units out. And we'll see where they decide to attack first. Where yeah, we got 15 seconds. 15 yeah, seconds. Symbiotes join the fight. Okay, that's really And jump. going through the expansion path. Yeah, don't attack into Magical. <laughs> don't attack into Magical. That's the, that's the rule right now. Just attack one. And Fool's Bay is good for this. The, opponent, the, the base are a bit separated, so you don't have your reinforcements come quite as quickly. But Magical is here. Magical is ready to help his ally defend. Even having static defense going up for Flicky. Smart choice. Getting it ready. And let's see how it goes. Here comes the push. Most, yeah, the workers are pulled on both sides to help defend. There's a lot of units heading back to the tower. Tower's ready and ready to defend. Here comes... Oh. Okay, that's different. Going for the hunting grounds instead to get the extra damage. So once it pops off, we'll see them going... Oh, we might not. We can see it work out well for Magical, but not at all for Walterio Motives losing their entire army again, only taking out a stat piece of static defense and nothing else. Yeah, that was uh, not a great attack. You, you want to do some damage. Behind this, Magical got his Efer, Flicky got his Efer. So behind this, the, our, our Ice team gets all of their tech up and running and ready for the next part of this, next phase of this game. While Santa and Sleepy are just so far behind, we're pulling their moats for the workers as well. Yeah, not looking well for, uh, for Walterior Motives. Walterior Motives has maybe a chance they're going for another push which it's risky to go for that they've already lost the first one they have the pyre for sleepy ghost to summon zol at this point that may simply be a matter of holding what they have rather than actually taking anything further magical sweeping through has their master hunters upgraded gets the pyre on below sleepy ghost -o. And while Sleepy Ghost though, could still be a threat, again, that is purely maintenance. Summoning Zol is just a matter of dying slower, not winning. Yes, Magical even hanging back to the tower to heal up his units before he heads up for the next part of this push. Will he go for the opponents? The opponents didn't even expand behind this, so if you attack, you attack into the main. really want to, but Santa and Sleepy are still being aggressive. They're still ready to jump on their opponents as soon as they can. And here we go. Bone Stalkers on Bone Stalkers. Yeah, and Zol coming out for Ghost though. Ghost of Summoning Zol, a little bit out of position. It's going to be hard to get that into the bases. And all, all Magic Flick has to do is avoid this fight. They time it out 10 seconds from now. They don't have to deal with Zol. And as it is, gets the surround, drops the Red Harvest. Magical able to just wipe out Santa's forces. Flicky as well, dropping the Hunting Grounds just to give that extra little buff. Now again, Walter Motives out of the fight, out of the game. We are moving on to game three. Oh man, another game, another rush. Let's see if Santa gets something different next time around. <laughs> yeah, I know. Santa's been Santa's been going heavily for these rushes, and I can see why it's intimidating to go against Magical. It makes sense. <laughs> but at the same time, it's over two. And Santa has a solid late game. Santa can play the late game. It is not a problem. Well, maybe third time's the charm here. Maybe. Okay. Maybe quite the game maybe. though, right? <laughs> Was there anything you guys think could have been changed to make the push work? Because they pulled, they all in. They pulled off the workers. They went all in. What went wrong? Honestly, there? if they had gone for the pyre camp on the way in and been able to summon Zol, especially if both of them had gone for a pyre camp each, been able to both summon Zol, they had they had fifty pyre. So each of them getting a pyre camp gets them seventy five. That's the Zol casting count or casting cost. At which point you got two Zols. You have on top of all the bone stalkers, and now you can start wiping out things. Because Zol just deals insane damage to buildings on that third shot, because it's percentage based and it hasn't been changed to not affect buildings yet. So you can do a lot of damage to buildings right now with Zol. That was the plan previously. That was not the plan in this fight, and it did not work out as well. We saw there. Yeah, the other solution is either like like that's a point, right? You want a power point when you do an attack. You want to hit a certain power power uh, yeah power point, and at that point. Uh, in this game, it was either waiting for his all ability or hitting just a bit sooner before Magical got his reinforcements up. Before, so so they were kind of in between both. They neither had the strong timing of having everything before the opponents had units, and at the same time, they didn't have Zol, so they didn't have any of those. So they were kind of stuck between two. Uh, yeah. So, it was... so it's the same thing as game one, just another timing issue. 
it not just timing of, issue. It, it was a planning issue too, because we right. saw here like their the units getting wiped out. They didn't have the power to work with their hunting ground. Little red circle there did not get used. That was their whole game plan: set up the hunting yeah. ground, run the units in there, and then use that to take out the main base. Which that doesn't work if it's not if you don't have the units there. It takes a wild setup as well. And yeah. after that point, it's just a matter of trying to pick a fight that might be to their advantage. Like Volterior motives. I mean, they wanted to get Zul here to take a fight, but Magic Flick could just run away. It wasn't a big deal. Yeah, so that's sometimes the issue. You summon an immortal when you want to win a fight. And if the opponent says, oh, I don't actually have to take this fight, it's kind of a bit of a wasted pyre. And you head back to what you used to be doing instead. Yeah. That's why I was saying that someone in the base, because that you can't run away from that fight. And here's a perfect fight for Magical, even getting Red Harvest, which takes the dead units and turns it into Quiddle, so extra shields for everything, plus extra damage. Holding it on that high ground as well. That was very cool. Yeah, the high ground absolutely helped. It was... The story of the match was Magical just placing their stuff a little bit better and ready whenever they were ready for anything, really. Well, we're about to head to map tree. Last thoughts here. What do you guys have before we go into what could be the last match of the series? Well, okay. I was slightly mistaken about Fool's Bay being a defensible map, but I'm not mistaken about <laughs> Embargo, the next map, being a defensible map, because okay. it very much is. There is so one entrance to the main base and one of the natural expansions. So there's three bases that are totally safe on each side, as long as you put some units in the front. Quick now, thoughts, Santa might still go for it, but I don't know. I don't think so. Final thoughts, ZK? I'm hoping we go for late game. I, I want to see some late game, especially on Embargo. It's an exciting map. I hope we see the Ancient in the middle of the map. We see fights happening there. But we're going into game. Flicky and, Ma Flicky and Magical, Zol Mala, Santa, Sleepy Ghost, Ajaria Zol. I don't see a rush coming from this, right? Right? <laughs> Ugh, never, never discount what Santa can do. Especially with Ajari. They can rush in and then deliver from evil back. Yeah, true. Well, that's not a, that's not a rush, right? That's just... A that's you're right. That's damage. a raid. That's a raid. Yeah. So both expanding. This is oh, looking yeah. good. There we go. Santa. Santa expanding. All right. We have a late game potentially on our hands. <laughs> yeah. As you said, making it harder to attack into this map. We got to mention though, this map has a really has a really short rush distance between both mains, so it's very easy to get reinforcements in. So a lot of pushes can get stronger much faster. But it's never going to be as fast as getting your own reinforcement to defend. But some pushes can get much stronger because of it. Uh, little teapot. It's, oof. Well, I mean, the important thing is that Flicky sees what's going on. I, I mean, that's what the teapots are for. That that is entirely what they're for. They are the scouts. They are, they are there to see what's up. We're not named for their purpose. Scouting the map, designed as a teapot. Because oh my god. You know, ZK. This is why I said can't count out Santa for rushing. Yeah, they have an expansion. Just... They have two expansions. Like, the, the, yeah. there's two expansions for that team. It's, it, I... They're slowing down their own timings, but at this point, it's a bit... Too, the other thing is that it's a bit late, meaning <laughs> the units are coming out, the actual army units can come out, and they can micro really well against these... Well, they're just workers. They're not uh, They're not made to attack. They don't... They are, but far. you know what? You know what? I can see the idea. You time it out for when your opponent's expansion is about to be finished. They're going to cancel it, but it still slows down their own expansion attempts, which gives... Oh, and there's the deliver from evil. I was right. Rush with deliver from evil. <laughs> there we go. Oh, some were left behind, unfortunately. Those oh, poor well. symbiotes from his ally. But like you said, at least uh, they're heading back. They cause some damage. They have an economical lead, kind of. Not really, because it's weird. They lost a lot of, they lost a lot of mining time there. <laughs> they so. did. Like they took out. They, they slowed in their opponent's mining time. They lost much of their own mining time. They had to rebuild workers at the same time. It's it's a mixed bag. It'll pay off in like five minutes if they get another expansion. But it's at this point, it's hard to say if it was worth it. Sleepy behind us didn't get his ethers quite yet. He's getting them now. Uh, Flicky heading for his first pyro camp and wanted to get that power up so he can use his immortal abilities, destroy his opponents. And Santa with his safari ready to just jump on teapots, kill all those scouts, stop him, stop them from seeing the next worker rush coming out. Yeah, assuming I mean, we have another worker rush, which I mean we can't assume anything. Magical? Aiming? They going for those rocks? They going for those rocks? They are maybe. They got better plans now. Heading for that pirate camp and Santa 
Yeah, there's too many units here. Santa can't fight for this pirate. Yeah, Magical will get power of his own. Santa forced to retreat back. And this map does not is not generous with pyre. Oh yeah, one of these maps with only two pyre camps. There's the ancient in the middle. If we do get to oh, that point the, in the there's the pyre miners at the edge, but they're really hard to get to. Like it, it's it's so out of the way. Yeah, exactly. Why would you want to go there? It's just too far. Uh, that's a lot of units though. Magical going for a lot of the calls. The frontliners very beefy units are great at taking the brunt of the of, of all the opponent's attacks. And well, that's that's exactly what magical needs. I mean, if they if they want to deal with these low tech rushes that have been coming in this entire series, just slowing them down. That has been the winning strategy so far, and it seems like it'll continue. Exactly, a lot of the calls coming in from Flicky as well. Mostly bonus stalkers from Sleepy. Uh, he just got his uh, his Efer production up and running. So behind this, he's mostly going to have these basic basic units and Zakaz deal with them pretty well. Uh, but the power of the defensive tower here. You can't really rush in. So behind this, Flicky and Magical going for that many Zakaz does mean they can't take up to anything else. But Zakaz on their own are pretty scary. Are they just heading for a surround? Are they? Are they going? No, I think they're going for run by. Yeah, they, they don't just avoid the tower completely. Drop in the sides, force opponents behind. Sleepy Ghosto forced to summon Zol, but doesn't really care. Santa with the Heavens Aegis just to power up their forces that much more as Flicky goes for the surround and Magical and Flicky together able to wipe out Sleepy Ghosto's forces. Santa's still presenting a bit of a threat. More important to them, though, is to get into the back lines, make sure their base doesn't get hit by the Zakal. They've pushed through even after the shields go away. Flicky and Magical are going for it. Embigging some of their units, getting that much more damage done. As much as Santa is pushing back a little bit, this is a retreat. This is not a route. Magical and Flicky just finding a slightly better position to work from. Sleepy Ghost's reinforcements will be enough to give Flicky and Magical pause. And that yeah. does end the push. Yeah, it's, it's all about ending the push, but that's a lot of units coming in. Reinforcements coming out faster for the defensive side. Uh, but here comes Magical's units. He's he's using his embiggened powers. All those are calls getting bigger from the Red Harvest and all of the spells, giving all the kills that happened. We see the size of the calls and those chunky boys are ready to chomp on everything of their opponents. Magical is definitely prepared for the next fight, setting a little more pyre just to have... Are they going to get Rain of Blood? They are so close to Rain of Blood. And a lot of Sao Shin on Santa's side, so to deal with frontliners, just get your own frontliners. However, there's no end here as those frums are coming in from Flicky. The frums, the giant mosquitoes can just bite to death every single thing. And Santa's not expecting them, and Santa will lose, well, at least stop mining as he loses some of his workers looking for the next point of attack. Oh, oh no. Walter mode is totally out of position. We're going to take out towers. Magic Flick fully aware. It's their tower that were taken out. And this is a push. This could be the push. Magic Flick does not use the high ground for them. So Sleepy Ghost and Santa are able to get the surround off. But that hunting grounds is ready. Magical's just about to get that. Will be where the fight turns around. Just about now-ish. Yeah, the Santa Sleepy Ghost are realized no, this they can't they can't stay here. They're going to die. <laughs> yeah, the frumps come in, but the bone stalkers at least shoot up. Uh, so, so Sleepy Ghost has a chance of taking Dells out. Salshin's still being produced, and yeah, Santa doesn't need to really produce his own anti air. He can trust on his ally to take care of that. And the push has been rebuffed. They lost their expansion. That's a nice win for Team Ice. And behind this, Fleeky expanding to the north path, uh, getting his third base up, has Santa's forced back to only one base with Salshin infused efforts coming in, ready for the next push. And uh, yeah, at this point, it's looking a little dire for fire. They want to, they want to keep pushing oh, if they can, but losing the tower to front. They have no map control. They have, z they have absolutely no map control. They've lost all of their towers outside of their main plateau. There is, they have, they're blind. Like they have no idea what's going on. They have no way to slow down their opponents at all. They have nothing to retreat to besides their own bases. Magical and Sleepy Go, or Sl San and Sleepy Ghosto. Pushing into air, trying to hold the line as best they can to push back, while Magic Flick is opening up as many paths as they can to hit from as many angles as possible when the time comes. Yeah, as a solution, when you're able to contain your opponent like this, you can just expand, take control of the map, make sure they haven't expanded to replace like Santa's doing right now. And if you're ready, you just uh, push in, 
okay it wasn't a worker it was just a scout <laughs> sad that wants to know exactly what's going up in the top left corner mm -hmm. but those farms are ready to eh, just keep scouting to keep map control to yeah, figure they're, out they're, they're ready to keep on. scouting <laughs> they're, yeah. they're not ready to die yet i mean they could i they could you know, if that they would die, be great for santa yeah well they die that means he can get more supply for other stuff right He's very close to 180. He's only like 60, 70 supply away from being full. So it's time to sacrifice some units to get those out. Flicky? I played this game. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> I played this game before, you know, I know how it works. And here comes the worker, the final worker pull of perhaps this series as right. they're thing for the final push. They have their pyro abilities. Santa has one pyro ability ready, but her opponents has close to a rain of blood. They're just waiting for the best engagement possible, getting the tower defense. And Santa's pushing forward as strong as he can. They're still not committing to the defense. And Magico's bringing his calls in for the full surround. Everything goes. With... <laughs> there's the surround. Tower does go down, but it's just it's they're baiting their opponents, getting them in a position where the surround comes in. Magical coming in from behind, cutting everything off. Flicky on the front on the high ground, preventing anything from moving through. And now it's just Santa and Sleepy Ghosto burning out their forces trying desperately to hold on to this fight but not I mean, able to really get any momentum at all the heaven's age is keeping them much alive much longer than they actually should be and it seems they're pushing through at this point fire dealing with most of these units magical deal, magical bring his units from the back microing as well as he can it might come down to reinforcement but so far fire are doing much more damage than he could have the immortal spells coming in clutch in that last fight bone stalkers coming in and all of magical's units at the back getting eliminated as the reinforcements for Flicky might just be enough to help deal with this. All the units coming through. Oh, those Icor though, those Icor clutch Icor from Magical. Everything that Walteri Monos has sent is weak to those doggos, and that that seals it. Turns the fight right back around, forcing Walteri Monos out of Magic Flick's base and securing the two extra expansions Flicky's gone for. Yeah, Flicky's never going to stop expanding and. Fire's never going to stop attacking. Santa and Sleepy coming in with the reinforcement. Saushin and Bone Stalkers doing their best. But Flicky behind this doesn't care. He has enough units to survive. There's not that much anti-air in his... And his frums are still dishing the damage. Even bring out one of his own workers. We see the Ancient going down as well, which will give 50 power to each of their... To each of these allies. And here comes workers one more time. <laughs> just, just... Just cannot cannot let it go yes i realize moats and symbiotes are actually a lot stronger than you'd think but they're not that strong <laughs> oh man this is this is hard for walterian motives doesn't even want to go for this fight anymore just just get him out of there if the units the moats survive the few, few workers come out of this alive as flicky and magico get a final surround on the final forces of sleepy ghosto and behind this Team Fire will have to GG out. This is the end of Walterio Modus and the run in this tournament. That and the end of the show match, actually. That is 3 0. Coming in. Coming in hot. We got 12 minutes game. We got 12 minutes game. We got to see an ancient. We got to get all this stuff going. We are. We yeah. got the thing. It wasn't quite late game. Sorry, Omo. That'll have to yeah. wait, but that'll be. I was promised late games. Uh, I'm, sorry. You know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We, we, we said eight minutes. Technically, uh, eight minutes. <laughs> that's true. It was game. 11 minutes. Um, yeah. We, we did pass that threshold. Well, oh, there man. was definitely a lot more to unpack in that game. I, I kind of lost the plot after the worker rush. What kind of happened after that? Well, to put it bluntly, it put them behind and they were able to come back from it. Um, but yeah, b the biggest thing is because they went for work rush, they never gone for the ether, and they weren't able to tech up. And without tech, you kind of stuck behind your early early units, and it just stayed with it. Sleepy goes to only staying on bone stalkers, and all the units coming out for opponents, and they were able to take it through from there. And that, that was, was in this game. Yeah, uh, Go ahead. I was gonna say, Go and that, that was the thing is that the, the units came through, and while there was a bit of pushback, the only hope that Santa and Sleepy Ghosto had was that buildup of army. But they didn't have anything with it. They had a bit of upgrades to the Bone Stalkers, but they didn't really have anything beyond that, mm -hmm. which just meant there wasn't a whole lot of momentum to work with. I saw, once they pushed in, it was like it was the I-Cores that sealed it at the end when they went when attacking Magic Flick. But going for the main base like that is very risky unless you can take unless you think you can take the win. And it was prudent of them to scout to see if they could find weaker expansions. Flicky just went in late enough that. Walteria Motors had no idea they should have gone for those expansions.
All right, well, we have a replay lined up, but we are going to talk to Magical first. You guys take the lead on this. You guys know him a lot better. Mm -hmm. When he joins the call, we're, we are working on that right now. So just give us a quick second. Yeah. When we were yeah. running through the game as well, I can't help but notice Magical had a ton more expansions, right? Was that just because you pulled off your workers to go for the attack? Was that part of yeah, the reason? It, or it's... It slows down his economy quite a bit, and once you slow down your economy that much, you won't get map control. Without map control, you can't expand. You don't have to expand. You can go into tech instead and just get a bigger army. But sometimes yeah. it's just better to expand because I mean, later the time it goes it takes, it The time it takes to rebuild all those workers plus that lost mining time, that's an expansion in itself. Like, in, well, just the time, just all that, all that cost of rebuilding a worker line is an expansion. Like a fully upgraded expansion of that. That's fair. Yeah, well, we have Magical himself joining us right now. Hey, Magical, thanks for joining the call. Can you hear us? Yes, yes. Hello, hello. Fantastic, boys. Lead, take, take the lead. What do you want to ask him? Uh, Magical, how, how often have you faced Worker Rush against Santa in the last month? Like, more or less than 100? Just a small question. <laughs> well, I don't think I've played 100 games by this game. But... More or less than 7? <laughs> Yeah, I think at least seven is a good answer. Yes. All right. <laughs> there we go. Are you bored of that at this point? It seems like you have it figured out. Yeah, honestly, the time when worker rushes were somewhat working, it was because of a little bug abuse. If you put workers on opponent's town hall, they're going to count of opponent workers. And because of that, you're going to produce workers. And when they work around <laughs> you, you have like six workers on the stage because of it. It was the only scenario in which worker rush could work. If you don't abuse it, if you don't abuse it, I don't think worker rush can ever work. Okay, so I in love that. Of, in any of those games, was there a point where <laughs> you could have taken damage from the worker rush, or like there was just something missing, or something that Santa and uh, and Ghosto could have done better there for the worker rush to work against you guys? No, I, 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 like, we, we not only, we, I think, acted properly, but we also kind of blind countered, especially in the second game, mm -hmm. uh, because I literally went, like, double alter before expansions. It was a hard counter. And, well, in, in, even the last game, I also put two ethers before expo, and it makes my expo expansions very late, and uh, I can cancel it late. Um, so it's, like, it's very good against worker rushes. But well, even if cool. I didn't do that, it, it doesn't matter. We have a replay on the screen right now. Can you just talk us through this a little bit? Oh, yeah, sure. game two, yeah, game two and you're getting after you fend off the first rush. Well, at this point, I was fairly certain that the game is won. Um, oh, so is it going to be like a big red harvest fight? On the ramp, never attack into red harvest. Yeah, I was actually surprised how much Santa was attacking into that because that's pretty much the rule. You use red harvest to push your opponent away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not also pulling workers against red harvest is bad idea. <laughs> it is like negative. It's negative investment <laughs> because all these workers are gonna be critters. Yeah, yeah, really fast. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So, so oh, go for it, Dom. Okay. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say so. Were you expecting Santa to just go cheese after cheese after cheese? Because they've been doing a lot of late game stuff in the past few weeks. I was kind of surprised to see it. Were you? Um, yes, I was. But in the first two games, just based on immortal picks, we kind of predicted something cheesy because like who plays double Orzum in macro yeah. game? And with double Xol, it's more viable to play macro, but it was a flicky call. Uh, he said it's going to be double out there, and yeah, he was correct. So <laughs> the second victory, you can give it to flicky. <laughs> well, we have game flicky. tree replay playing out right now. What's going on here? Oh, well, it's, uh, at, at this point, maybe it's we are, we are already ahead after the worker rushes, and he just, uh, we, we were just poking with the cows. Because they were out of position and killing our tower, I think they couldn't go for it so late. And because of that, we just used it. And well, here gonna be a red harvest fight again. And they're kind of forced to take it at this point. 
yeah, they don't really have a choice here. <laughs> were you worried when they push into your base, though? I mean, the Ikors kind of clinched it, but before that, your armies were not doing too hot. Like, after no, this fight. No, like, uh, we had a lot of input action. Flaky got, like, infinite bases. I, I think we were just, with some reinforcements, I think we would hold it easily. Okay. Uh, it was a lot of unions, though. So I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of unions. <laughs> Yeah. And this rep around it was really nice. Yeah, it worked yeah, out pretty well. It was kind of an accident because I was hoping to collect fire, but it, it worked out. out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it worked out beautifully. Just helped slow things down. And again, like you said, your reinforcements were coming. Yeah. My other question, Magic, we've only been playing Malice. Because Malice is your favorite, or you just... Uh... You're just making, I guess Mala is just your favorite this point, or you just don't like the other immortals? Or is there a reason for staying, sticking with Mala? Um, uh, you see this beautiful Red Harvest ability? Ah, uh, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, th I think that this ability needs to be uh, tweaked a little bit, uh, kind, of, kind of showing it in the real games, the developers. Okay. So, so just using it as much as possible until it gets nerfed, got it. That's, that, yeah. uh, I've mm -hmm. seen that before. <laughs> I love that. A fellow Mala and Jaya. When I was reading the Actually, abilities, I told you guys the same thing. Speaking Sounds of broken. one last thing, what would you say... Sh what Do you have any particular ideas of what could be done regarding Mala's kit, like to make Red Harvest a bit more in tune, or less overtuned, and say to make Bloodwell a bit more appealing? I actually has, had given like two suggestions regarding Red Harvest. Uh, one was reduce the circle radius, but make it faster so you can micro use it pick up with dead units kind of like that mm -hmm. and second one is a bit more crazy is switch uh blood drain and red harvest essentially right, so you put yeah, red harvest as ultimate yeah and blood drain you kind of reduce it and make it a combat ability it's a bit crazy one but i think it also can work maybe i, I mean i think that would actually synergize better with the blood wells too because then you really want to get that pyre from the blood wells yeah maybe I mean, I don't know, but you would know better than I if getting power from Bloodwells has its own issues. Yeah, it's not very common. Uh, it's like, usually it's like you have a defensive Bloodwell. Well, I guess if there's a fight there, you can get power. But usually it's not on purpose. Right. Well, great stuff. Thank you, Magical. Those were great insights. Pretty funny at some moments as well. Thanks for joining us. Any last Thank words to the too. fans? Well... <laughs> Um, not really. <laughs> okay, fantastic stuff. We will see you next week, I believe. So for now, thanks for joining us. Okay, I, I think he's gone. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Well, back to the tournament at hand. Let's wrap this up, recap it a little bit here. Dom and ZK, what are your final thoughts, Dom? Worker rush. Worker rush? Yes. Maybe worker rush? Yes, actually, worker rush. That, that was my summary of the games. Yep, you know, sounds fantastic. ZK? Yep. I want to see a more late game, I guess. It's, uh... <laughs> yeah, that's what, what I was promised. I know. Well, I, you, you, next week, don't worry about it. Next week, we'll have yeah, a lot of late games. 1v1 cheese doesn't work quite so... Well, okay, actually, no, it does work well, but it doesn't have the... You don't have the temptation of two players worth of workers or two players worth of early game units. <laughs> so people don't go for it quite so often. Fantastic. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in as well. I do believe that will be it for Brick the Game number 25. Come back next week. We'll have the 1v1s. We'll have the late game. Brick the Game number 26 will be coming soon.